Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar. Prior to working at AGU, I used to be a faculty member, and I, I in getting ready for this webinar, I spoke to some uh, friends who are academics and spoke to some students who have interned with us in the last few years to find out what kinds of writing students are doing within their geoscience degree preparation at universities and colleges. So I wanted to present a little bit about that and then offer some advice for mostly students who are attending today's webinar. So to the several uh, undergraduates who are at today's uh, webinar and also for those faculty, you probably are aware that as an undergraduate, most students are required to take some basic English courses, uh, your typical English 101 and 102 types courses, where you may be writing essays, uh, responses to prompts, uh, writing papers. And a lot of this writing is uh, in the sort of the MLA style of writing, the way you cite, the way you write, is, is based on a very different style than you would if you were writing for a geoscience course. If you're uh, a declared geoscience major or taking a science major, you also have lots of opportunities to do writing. Uh, that writing, and here are just some examples, may consist of field notes or lab notes while you're working in your upper division or lower division classes. Some professors require students to write sort of a lit review paper, you know, whether they're in their sophomore courses, junior courses, or even senior level courses. Some students have opportunities to write a research paper for an upper division course, say, such as petrology or hydrogeology or uh, mineralogy. And the writing that you do in these courses is a little different from the writing that you may do in your English courses. The, the style of writing is very different. Uh, so, for example, you may be required to follow the style of, of a geoscience journal. Say, for example, um, you know, your professor has, is a member in a professional society. You know, he or she subscribes to a journal and they may request that you know, all students use the citing style and the writing style based for that journal. So it's very, very different from the type of writing that you do in an English course. Many students, while they're undergraduates, also have an opportunity to do a thesis, uh, which is sort of the writing product at the end of the culmination of a semester or two worth of research. So several students have an opportunity to do a writing, uh, writing a thesis that may you know, be anywhere in length from 20, 30, 40 pages. And again, the, the, the way you write that um, bachelor's thesis would again be in the style of that geoscience journal, you know, geoscience um, um, sort of technical writing style rather than the MLA writing style. So here are some examples of the type of writing an undergraduate might be involved in while they're in, in college. So we also have lots of graduate students today at the webinar. So graduate students also have ample opportunities to practice their writing skills. And for many of those graduate students, it begins with starting to uh, writing that is associated with the research they may be doing. So many of the students will go out in the field or they'll be doing their research in the lab. So you're required to take meticulous notes in both the lab setting as well as in the field setting. Of course, you're taking courses. So there's always uh, writing that may be required to be done uh, related to these courses. In addition to that, many graduate students uh, compete for sort of internal university proposals, you know, be it for summer support or if you're interested in attending a conference or you're seeking monies to get some support for field work. Uh, you may be writing sort of internal university proposals that are not typically very long, but they have a standard format and you're required to make your case. Um, in addition to that, many graduate students also compete for internal um, research grants. So this is, you know, sort of seed money to help you buy, uh, you know, some uh, things that you might need uh, for your for your field work. If you're uh, working on your graduate degree, you may have opportunities to even work on external grant proposals. So for example, uh, you may be involved in writing your own NSF uh, graduate research fellowship uh, proposal. 
many students uh, also um, can be listed as co-PIs on their advisor's grant proposal, especially if you're a PhD student and your advisor is applying for a federal grant. So you get opportunities to practice your writing skills uh, when you uh, help uh, write external grant proposals. Also, if you're applying for money for your research or other things uh, to other federal agencies, again, you have that experience of uh, working on grant proposals. So in addition to uh, working on these proposals, if you're working on your PhD, you probably have to submit some sort of a dissertation proposal to your uh, graduate committee or to the graduate school. So again, you're, you get ample opportunities to practice your writing. And of course, uh, as a culmination of your master's degree or your PhD degree, you get to produce a thesis and present that to the graduate school as well. Many students, also get involved in writing peer-reviewed journal articles because it is required by your advisor or your program that you at least write a paper in it is part of your uh, um, work that is required to graduate with your degree. For many institutions, it's uh, writing two or three papers that then can be just simply reformatted for a PhD dissertation. So you get ample experience uh, writing as a graduate student. So these are just, again, some examples of writing that you might uh, be exposed to while you're a graduate student. I wanna move on to just sort of giving you some general advice uh, before we move on to our other two speakers. So these are sort of are written in no particular order, but I would recommend that as a student, if you have an opportunity to take a technical writing course that is, um, available on your campus, you should consider taking one of those courses as an elective. I think you'll find that uh, very educational and uh, very informative. If your university campus has a writing center, you should think about looking at uh, what kind of services they offer students. You know, Can they help uh, do some sort of copy editing? Are they available to give you some general guidance and tips about uh, your, uh, your writing in uh, particular? Or is there some advice or courses that you can take um, for not for credit, but just on a pass fail basis uh, to uh, improve your writing from the writing center? Many students these days present their research at local or regional or national conferences. So when you're presenting your research at a conference, you are, you're supposed to write an abstract, you submit an abstract so that you can then go present at the conference. So writing, abstract writing again is another example of uh, writing that is very different from writing a thesis or writing a paper or writing a proposal. So you should consider uh, submitting abstracts to present your research at conferences. If uh, you're a student who is involved with a club or organization on the campus, you might consider trying your uh, trying writing for the organization's website or any kind of outreach materials that may be available uh, from the organization. Many times organizations on campus have to write small proposal to seek funding for their activities to some office on campus. So you might consider working on writing a, a mini funding proposal. If you're a student in a department that is very active and uh, produces newsletters or is involved in writing articles for alumni, uh, you might consider sharing your science by writing a story about your research for your department newsletter or the alumni magazine. Uh, that's again, it's, it's writing about your research, but writing it for a very different audience than for your committee or for the graduate school or, or for uh, a scientific conference. So again, just some general tips and some advice for students. Let me add a few more tips here. If you're a member of a geoscience professional society, whether it's a national, uh, organization or local organization, uh, they probably have chapters or their opportunities to write uh, for those uh, the newsletters that the organization produces. So you might consider submitting an article for the chapter newsletter. Many organizations, many professional societies and organi organizations also have blogs. So you might consider uh, being a guest blogger for your professional society. That's a very different type of writing 
compared to writing a thesis or writing a paper. If you're interested in geoscience policy, you might also consider applying to be an intern at many of the professional societies. For example, at AGU and AGI and other professional societies, there are interns who work in the geoscience policy area during the semester, during the summer. And these interns, when they are uh, they're hired, they're writing news briefs. So this is, again, very different style of writing and very different type of writing. So you might consider applying to be an intern at a geoscience professional organization that has a policy program. You can also write case studies. For example, AGI has a critical issues program where you can work with the staff in the critical issues programs and work on writing up a case study. You can also write a letter to your local legislator. Very different style of writing. Many organizations also offer writing externships and internships. For example, at AGI, uh, you've probably heard about Earth Magazine. You can buy it on uh, the newsstands. Uh, there are opportunities to be an extern and submit writing without actually being physically at the organization. So these are externships that are available throughout the year. And if you've uh, had a chance to look at Earth Magazine articles, this is written very differently compared to a blog post or a newsletter article. Uh, in that same vein, organizations and professional societies also have internships, uh, writing internships. At AGU, one can apply to be an intern for EOS, which is the digital newspaper of the organization. And the writing for that, uh, for EOS, is very different from uh, writing for Earth Magazine. So you might consider um, having some uh, writing experiences that are very different from those that you have uh, when you're a student or, uh, or a graduate student. And last but not least, just a few more pieces of advice. Uh, if you aren't able to be an intern or write for uh, your newsletter for your department, you can certainly hone your writing skills by helping a friend edit a paper, their thesis, or any kind of writing in general, volunteer to be a writing mentor for a friend, and the point is that you should have an opportunity to practice your writing, all different types of writing as much as you can. And one advice that I would give you is that you might wanna save all your writing samples and writing products that you've created for potential job applications. And you're gonna hear about this from our two panelists today and why this is very important. And let me leave, it, leave you with a few uh, other nuggets. Uh, every chance you get to write, you should consider writing and read a book, read a really thick book. Uh, it also helps to uh, build your vocabulary and um, it, you become a better writer the more you read. And then just some final resources for students uh, on, this, on, this, on this slide. I have uh, just some snapshots of various resources that you may have already come across and may find useful. Um, there is a link for um, a document from the Geological Society of America. It has a sort of one pager on how you cite different types of resource or different types of sources when you're, you're doing scientific writing or geological writing. And so uh, many journals have this type of a one pager that tells you how to do your references. So there's something you might find handy when you're doing your writing for uh, your classes or your writing, working on your dissertation or your thesis. In addition to that, you might also consider looking at the hints for authors for both Earth Magazine and EOS. In, gen in addition to just specific advice for the actual magazines or the newspaper, there are some general tips for authors which you might find interesting and useful. And with that, I'm going to say thank you and pass the baton on back to Leela.